Okay, friends. Now let us talk about uh, the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis. Uh, now, what is mean by the in intrinsic pathway of apoptosis? This in this intrinsic pathway of apoptosis, uh, the cellular components uh, inside a cell is getting killed, and as a result of the uh, them to be getting killed, the cell is getting killed. So again, in this case, what we are looking at a picture of mitochondria, and now we we'll look at uh, the making of apoptosome, which is being presented uh, via the production of cytochrome C inside the cytosol, along with uh, procaspase nine molecules, and finally it will in turn activate the procaspase uh, caspase ca cascades, and it will kill the cell. Now, how a cell has been killed from the intrinsic uh, members of a cell. Now, in previous times, when you talk about the killer cells to kill a cell, or any type of stimulus that is coming from the outside of the cell, which tells the cell to be killed, but in this case, in the intrinsic pathway, uh, the cell is uh, informed to be killed from the the information is coming from the inside of the cell. Information is coming on from the part of the cell like mitochondria in this case in sometimes it can be come from plastid in case okay so in this case that's why they are called the intrinsic pathway that means the relay information that the cell has to be dead the cell have to die the information is coming from uh, any member inside the cell okay now in this case what we are looking at in the mitochondria is sending the information of this uh, to the cell that the cell have to have to be killed now in this case uh, the inside the mitochondria, what we know, mitochondria consist of two different membranes. One is the inner membrane, another one is the outer membrane. And in between these two membranes, we have the uh, periplasmic sp uh, intermembrane. Sorry, intermembrane space of mitochondria. Now, inside this intermembrane space of mitochondria, there are proteins which are called cytochrome C. Remember, the cytochrome C molecules are really, really important in m many type of uh, oxidation reactions actually the cytochrome c molecules helps them to do different chemical reactions now what happens uh, when this uh, cytochrome c molecules just leave this uh, intermembrane space and it come out in s into the cytoplasm of a cell it will create a huge trouble for the cell how now let's look at now whenever uh, a cytochrome c get a chance to uh, m transfer from this mi mitochondrial intermembrane space in into the cytosol then this uh, cytochrome c along with another important molecule which is called apaf1 along with this apaf1 they will interact with each other and not only they interact with each other but also they are hydrolyzing atp uh, into adp and use the energy of this atp hydrolysis to attach this apaf with the cytochrome c so what happens in this in this picture we are looking at the apaf is having a structure which is inactive because its active side is fulfilled with another card domain or card domain as we can see why we mean by this card domain this card domain domain helps more APF molecules or APAF molecules to come together to arrange themselves to attach themselves to make a complex now this card the domain uh, just sit on their active side to block uh, the activity of APF1 in normal situation inside the cell whenever the cytochrome C just leak out into the cytoplasm from mitochondrial intermembrane space this cytochrome C along with APF1 hydrolyzing ATP into ADP ut utilize the energy of hydrolysis of ATP and then the cytochrome C just sit on the active site of this APF1 and that activates the these APF1 molecules and what happens this APF1 molecules along with the uh, cytochrome C will align themselves uh, together and interact with each other with this card domains which is denoted here so the card domains are there they interact with card domain they're making a circular complex like that they're continuing uh, hydrolyzing this ATP molecule uh, because they need energy to arrange themselves in such a manner such a good oriented manner they use energy to to orient themselves and finally what it called an apoptosome they make this apoptosome and after making this apoptosome they need to activate this apoptosome by attaching another important ingredient of cellular apoptosis which is called procaspase molecules in this case we are taking procaspase 9 uh, for doing this job so they are taking procaspase 9 but not only they are taking procaspase 9 only in this case but they are also taking procaspase 9 at attached with card domains too so there are other adapters proteins out there which is actually tagging this procaspase 9 molecules with card domains so as we know in case of previous examples of apoptosis we can see 
there are different procaspase molecules 1 uh, 10 uh, 7 like this different molecules those procaspase molecules those 10 and 9 8 all these procaspase molecules do not have this card domain attached to them but this procaspase molecule in this case which is procaspase 9 is made in such a way it is made for this particular purpose that's why they uh, they are attached with this card domain because they need to arrange along with this apaf uh, uh, cytochrome c complexes to make an active apoptosum complex which in turn is going to activate the caspase molecules so all these procaspase molecules interact them together to finally make a really oriented structure like this these procaspase molecules will be cleaved and finally it, it leads to the formation of tetrameric caspase molecule and finally it produces the caspase 9 molecules the tetramer of caspase 9 molecules it thereby activates the executioner procaspases so it will it will make the procaspase 10 and procaspase 8 which are executioner procaspases it will cleave those uh, procaspase 8 and 9 and finally make more and more procaspase uh, pro final more, more and more caspase 8 and caspase 9 from procaspase molecules by using those protease uh, uh, degradation uh, uh, technique uh, by cleaving off techniques and then it will go on like a chain reaction finally create those caspase molecules active and those active caspase molecules finally in turn is going to cleave the cytoplasmic protein as well as uh, the nucleus proteins so this is a structure of this apoptosum complex uh, if we look at the extra crystallography and we crystallize the structure then we can uh, dramatically present the structure like that so it's a very good uh, graphical origin orientation of the structure. Now uh, let's think that why the cytochrome C just spill off from this uh, intermembrane space into the cytosol. What makes them to become in, in, into the cytosol from intermembrane space? Because the normal residence for cytochrome C is in this intermembrane space of a mitochondria. In general situation, in genuine situations, they present all time in this intermembrane space. So what makes them come out from this into the cytosol? Uh, definitely there are external there, there are internal stimulus in this case so if we look at uh, the picture here uh, we have the stimulus so in this case uh, in, into this mitochondrial outer membrane what we can see there are different proteins we call BH proteins or BH123 there are proteins these are actually called the BCL proteins uh, the name of these proteins are sometimes uh, BACs or BAX or something like that in this case they are having different domains inside the protein different subdomains inside the proteins according to their those name of the subdomains we call it BH123 3. Some of the proteins are having only uh, domain 1, 3, some of them have 2, 3, but it is really, really important that all these BCL uh, proteins are having uh, common uh, this BH3 domain in common. Okay. So what happens this BCL proteins normally situated into this uh, outer membrane. Some of those BCL proteins are anti-apoptotic in nature and some of those proteins are apoptotic in nature or pro-apoptotic in nature. That's are the difference uh, that's are th that is a really really paradoxical situation in this case because all those proteins are called the BCL proteins. Now if I go back you can see here so all these proteins are the BCL proteins so these three types of proteins all of them are BCLs but some of them are anti apoptotic where in this case the example of BCL2, BCL XL and then these are the anti apoptotic some of those proteins are pro apoptotic which is containing this BH3, BH1 and BH2 domain and anti apoptotic proteins are having only BH4 domains uncommon with the BH123 uh, proteins Okay, and some of these are the pro-apoptotic proteins, which again in this case we can have only BH3. So whatever we are looking at, all of these proteins, all of these BCL proteins are made up, BCL2 proteins are actually are made up with this BH3 domain in common. Okay, because BH3 is interconnecting all these an anti-apoptotic along with pro-apoptotic proteins. Okay, now what happens when... Uh, in normal situations, these BH, uh, BH, BCL molecules are uh, reside in uh, the outer membrane or they are embedded in the outer membrane of mitochondria. They are uh, placed in uh, many, in several amounts, but they are placed individually into this cell membrane. What happens whenever we get an uh, apoptotic signal? Uh, so whenever it gets any at apoptotic signal by uh, the removal of any by 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 any type of signal from the outside of this mitochondria from the cytosol or any signal which is coming out from cytosol via via transmission from the outside of the cell, what happens? This inactivated BH123 proteins will come closer and they will interact with each other to make a channel-like structure and this aggregated uh, BH123 
proteins become active and this active BH123 protein complexes helps this, uh, this cytochrome C molecules to leave this intermembrane space and come out into the cytosol. That's how this, uh, this cytochrome C molecules just come into the cytosol from intermembrane space. Okay, and uh, now let's think that in normal situations what happens because if it is the scenario that then most of the time this cytochrome C molecule will come uh, out into this uh, into the cytosol because of this apoptotic signals, apoptotic stimulus. So there must be some way to prevent this uh, this BH123 uh, molecules to be getting activated by the apoptotic stimulus all the time. So we need to have a tight regulation in this step and it in turn we definitely have it. So in normal situations when we have the inactive intrinsic pathway it is denoted here. So in the mitochondria we have this inactivated BH123 domains but in this stage we also we have talked about this BLC2 proteins which are anti-apoptotic in nature and these proteins are also embedded in the outer membrane of mitochondria though it is not shown. But these BCL2 proteins are having the anti-apoptotic nature they will block the activity of this BH123 proteins and block these cells to be aggregated with each other in normal situations. So in normal situations the BH123 molecules are being prevented to getting uh, closer via those BH BCL2 proteins. Only after uh, uh, the, the removal of this anti-apoptotic BCL2 proteins, uh, this uh, BH123 protein will come closer. They make a channel, and then only the cytochrome C molecules will uh, will uh, released will be released into the cytosol. So what happens in the activated state? Again, this these molecules, these BCL2 molecules, are being uh, inhibited by some apoptotic stimulus. So what they are just doing, they are just, ap uh, just preventing this BCL2 molecule to work. But that that's that will done all the jobs sequentially because uh, this this BH one two three molecules are destined to come closer together to form this complex and normally but this complex was prevented by BCL two previously so the only work for apoptotic stimulus is to prevent this BCL two to work its job uh, to to quit its job and when they prevent uh, this BCL two molecule to do its job then only all the matters are going sequentially and this BH one two three molecules will come come closer they make a channel like structure and that helps the cytochrome C molecules along with other ex uh, uh, other types of uh, molecules which are present also present in the intermembrane space and important for the cellular division or to make uh, the proteasm com uh, to make uh, the, the um, apoptosome complex will uh, getting removed into the cytosol from intermembrane space and then they will aggregate with each other along with procraspase 9 to make the apoptosome complex and they will, uh, they will finally kill the cell by activating the caspase those caspase is in turn going to cleave the proteins of cytosol as well as uh, the nucleus. So what we are looking at at the end of the day we have to activate the caspase molecules because these caspase molecules are the active protein degradators molecules which can be found inside the cell. So we have to activate anyhow this procaspase to caspase molecules and when we activate this caspase that means we can cleave the cell out, we can cleave the cell and we can turn the cell into a dead cell. That's how the intrinsic pathway is done but in intrinsic pathway we can see the activity of all those intrinsic molecules which have been responsible for a cellular death from BH123 to BCL domain molecule contained domain molecule and also uh, Procaspase 8, 9 and 10 and other types of accessory molecules that we still don't know uh, much about. Okay and that's it and I hope that's gonna help you. As I have told before that uh, along with the cytochrome C there are other uh, molecules also present in, in this intermembrane space of mitochondria must need to be in, uh, entered into the cytosol from intermembrane space because they have a special work to do and in this slide I am going to explain this work. Now you can see here whenever this uh, uh, these molecules, they, wh whenever this uh, this BH123 proteins are getting activated in normal situations, when there are inactive intrinsic pathway, so there are molecules of BCL2 or anti-apoptotic factors which are actually blocking this BH123 proteins to come closer to each other to make any complex uh, and to prevent the cytochrome C to leave uh, this intermembrane space. What happens? The procaspase molecules are getting cleaved by any any situations by any type of stimulus. We can say that this is a 
spontaneous cleavage uh, of this procaspase molecules to caspase, uh, making a tetrameric active caspase molecule. But though they are making this act active caspase molecules, but still. And they are unable to establish any kind of work because there are IAP molecules, which are the protein molecules, which are preventing these caspase molecules to act like a caspase molecule, to act like a killer molecule. So they are blocking the activity of caspase molecules, caspase molecules in uh, the normal situations inside a cell. So there are lots of things are going on all the time. So just remember the sequential steps. So what is happening in normal situations? Spontaneous degradation of procaspases into caspases, but they can the, the activity of these caspases are blocked by IAP molecules. But in uh, but whenever any active apoptotic st stimulus is coming out from uh, from inside the cell or from outside the cell, what happens? This apoptotic stimulus in turn is gonna disable those BCL2 molecules. Remember, then those they, that means this BH1 to 3 molecules have a chance to. Uh, talk with each other to come closer with each other and to finally make a channel through which this uh, cytochrome C along with molecules like uh, like this uh, like small this blue and this orange molecule which is an anti IAP molecule which is coming out uh, through this channel which are made by this BH123 proteins and what happens when they come out some of them like this uh, cytochrome C along with procaspase molecules make a uh, apoptosome complex but when the apoptosome complex it is made um, uh, is trying to make a activated caspase molecule from procaspase 8 or procaspase 10 which are executional procaspases in these situations in the previous situation we can see these act these complexes are blocked by iaps but now we know as a result of this apoptotic stimulus as a result of making this BH1 to 3 complexes, we not only release this B, uh, cytochrome C, we also release this orange color molecule, which is in turn anti IAP. So, this anti IAP molecule will come, and this anti IAP molecule will block the activity of this IAP molecule, which uh, in previous times preventing uh, this, uh, which was preventing these uh, mm, caspase molecules to become activated. But now, as a result, they are blocked. As a result this IAP molecules are blocked that means we have made an activated free uh, caspase molecules now this activated free caspase molecules can easily degrade a cell via its pro uh, proteolytic activity so remember so not only the cytochrome C molecules are coming and procaspase are, uh, procaspase 9s are coming to make a, a apoptosome complex that's uh, half of the apoptosic intrinsic pathway but another half which has been carried out by executioner uh, procaspase Caspases like Procaspase 8 and Procaspase 10 has been mediated by making this and in those cases we have the IAP protein along with the anti-IAP protein activity to regulate its activity in the normal situation because we we need to produce all the proteins at once inside a cell but it depends on time in situation when we have to use a particular protein or not that's why in all biological systems what we do we make a gate we always block the gate uh, but what happens when you have a chance or time to open the gate, we just open it and the process will go on. The same thing is happening here again. We make this IAP for blocking these active caspases, but now when we need the cell to be dead, uh, then we release this uh, uh, anti-IAPs, which also resides along with cytochrome C inside the mitochondrial intermembrane. <laughs> and uh, when it releases, then uh, this anti-IAP will block the IAPs in that will in turn uh, make this uh, caspase molecules free and then these caspase molecules can go and do its job and finally kill the cell.